What is going on you guys? In this video today, we're gonna to talk about the 10 WordPress plugins that I use whenever I'm building a WordPress website. I can't say that I use every single one of these in every single WordPress site that I build, but these are the ones that I use most, most common, that I recommend, and are a good mix up of all the different tools that you need when building a WordPress website. Now, I host over 80 different websites for uh, for clients. I host their website, I manage everything from the domains to the hosting, the backups, you name it. And then in turn, I earn a residual consistent passive income every single month that just keeps trickling into my bank account. So if you're interested in learning how I do that, I've got a course down in the description below. It's launching January 1st and the price is only gonna go up after there. So we've got two and a half-ish weeks until that course launches. So if you're interested in learning how I do that, step-by-step, step, how I set up clients, how I bill them, how I find clients, I mean, you name it, the link is in the description below. Grab that before the price goes up. Okay, the first plugin is Elementor. And this shouldn't be kind of a big surprise to you unless you've been living under a rock. Elementor is like one of the best ways to build a WordPress website. Yes, you can go out and purchase a theme, but um, if you're not really like savvy with the coding and all that kind of stuff, Elementor is the way to go. For example, here's here's a website that I'm building for a client right now. Uh, this is a, a permanent makeup uh, company. All you do is you come up here, you click edit with Elementor. It, it takes you into the website builder and then from here, uh, you have all of these different options for layout and plugins and columns and how things are formatted. It's so easy. Like you can see over here, you've got sections, images, videos, buttons, and quite literally it's drag and drop. I mean, you can come in here and like, let's say I want to change this, this text. And so, so instead of real women, I mean, I don't know why it would be men, but I could say real men, boom, I hit save update and it's done. Elementor has so many default plugins out of the box. I mean, you can add galleries, you can add carousels, you can do all these different things that quite literally are drag and drop. I don't know that I build a website anymore without Elementor and I highly recommend it. Plugin number two that I recommend is something called Rank Math SEO. I think a lot of you are probably familiar with Yoast SEO. It's like one of the most popular SEO plugins out there. I still use it on a lot of different websites, but I'm actually starting to convert over to this rank math. The reason why is that it has a lot more features out of the box I'm finding. And I've also noticed that Yoast has kind of um, slowed down some of my websites. I feel like it's a little bit bloated. They're really like salesy. They want you to upgrade to the premium version. Um, I just feel like a lot more comes out of the box with rank math. And I feel like it's a little bit more uh, user-friendly and intuitive too. So as you create blog posts, you can put in, for example, multiple keywords. So for example, let's say I'm writing a blog post on dog grooming with, um, with Yoast, you could only put in grooming. And now with rank math, I really like that you can put in multiple uh, focus keywords for that specific blog post. So I'm finding that I actually prefer this a lot more. Um, like I said, I still use Yoast on some websites, but I'm starting to use this more and more. Plugin number three is something called Manage WP, Manage WordPress, that should be obvious. Uh, this plugin is a game changer. So this is a product that's actually built by GoDaddy, which I'm sure you're familiar with um, with them. But this this company allows you to manage multiple WordPress installs from one main dashboard. It's so great because like I said, I've got over 80 clients right now and when I have to go in and update all the different plugins and you know do these things, backups, it would be really tedious to have to log into every single one of these websites, click update. I just, I don't have the time for that. And so with Manage WP, it's free, it does monthly backups. Um, and the nice thing too is like it remembers all the passwords for you so you don't have to ever log into another WordPress website ever again with a username and a password. With one click, I can just click boom and it'll update all of the plugins for me. You have to be careful with this too because sometimes just like blindly updating WordPress plugins can break things, but you know, you click you click update, you wait a couple minutes, you go check the website, click through a couple pages, make sure that everything's working and, and then you're done. So with all of my clients, I do this once a month or so on average. I'll update all the plugins, check everything. But without this plugin, it would take so much longer to do everything. So I highly recommend this one as well. Number four is WordPress popular posts. I really like this plugin. It's very simple. It doesn't really do much aside from just showing you which are your most popular posts. And the reason I like this is because it just kind of shows an easy dashboard on which posts are getting the most amount of traffic. So if I come over here, I can click on WordPress popular posts. 
And then I can see that in the last, I don't know, we'll do 30 days, um, you can see kind of my, my hills and valleys. You can see that on this particular blog, at least, this one has gotten 3,500 views. This one's got 1,100, this one's gotten 400, and then you can change it to today or 24 hours. Um, it's just very simple and it helps me know more like what my readers are enjoying, the kind of content they're enjoying. And just from a quick glance, I can see more of the content that I should probably be making more of. Uh, plugin number five is called Anti-Spam B. If you've got a WordPress website, you know without a doubt that you just get plagued with tons of spam. If you've got a contact form, you're going to get like thousands of spam emails if you have open con uh, comments that are just available for anyone to comment on you're going to get a bajillion spam comments as well with anti-spam b you install it you don't even really have to configure it you just click activate and then it'll cut down significantly on the amount of spam that you get if any i maybe get a random comment here or there but most of it is pretty legit plugin number six is something called word fence again if you haven't heard of this one you're probably living under a rock as well but I do not set up a single WordPress website without this plugin. WordPress has so many vulnerabilities and hacks, it's ridiculous. But I have not been hacked once, not even once, without uh, whenever I'm using this plugin. So WordFence, uh, again, is a free plugin. It does brute force attack. Um, it does, does whitelisting. I mean, it, it does so many different things that protect your website. So again, I haven't been hacked as long as I've had this. Whenever I don't install this, then I do get hacked pretty regularly. Um, on the flip side, so plugin six is actually gonna be a two-part plugin. Um, another one that I'm kind of testing out right now is called iTheme Security. Um, I, I'm not 100% convinced that I'm gonna switch all of my WordPress websites over to this one just yet, um, but I, I am liking it so far. I'm just not ready to put it on client websites yet, um, but it's called iTheme Security. It's going to probably replace WordFence for me. The main reason is I feel like WordFence is really pushy with uh, kind of their upsells and their premium. Again, I just don't like that every time I log into a WordPress website. Um, but two, I found that WordFence is also a little bit slow um, for my website. So I found that iThemes um, just seems a little bit more lightweight, but it has a lot of the features uh, that I need to keep my website safe. So I'll keep you updated more as I test this, but I, I think probably I will upgrade to iThemes and use that on all my websites eventually. Number seven is the WordPress Classic Editor. With WordPress 5, they came out with the new editor and it's awful. I hate it, it's so clunky and I, I just want a blank screen where I can type my blog post. That's it, that's all I really care about. I don't need all these fancy like formatting, like drag and drop and it just like places things weird. I hate it. So classic editor, you can install that, it'll replace the other one and I recommend that because the new one I don't know, maybe I'm just resistant to change. I just, I can't stand it. So Classic Editor, in my mind, is a must. Another plugin that's a must have for me is called Smush It, not to be confused with Smush. There's this plugin right here called Smush, but this one is the one I use, which is smush.it. Um, this guy is pretty much everything I want. Th this one is really popular, but it only lets you optimize so many images that I don't know that it does like an amazing job, but I really like this guy right here, smush.it, because it truly is free. It optimizes your images and then you don't have to think about it. Another plugin that's a must have is Google Analytics. This one's a little bit confusing because there's actually multiple Google Analytics plugins within WordPress. It's kind of confusing to know which one you should use. If you search Google Analytics, um, I think I've used all of these. I've, I've used the, the one by Monster Insights, I've used this GA one, and I've also used this one um, by Exact Metrics. I, I don't know why this one doesn't have like a very good review. It says it's got, you know, a million installations, but it's only got like two and a half stars. I've used this a lot and actually haven't had any issues with it at all. But honestly, truly, probably any of these will work just fine. You just need an easy way to um, connect your, your analytics code to your WordPress website. That's a great way to do it. Alternatively too, if you don't even wanna use a plugin, sometimes I even do this, I'll just copy the code directly from Google Analytics. I'll throw it in my header tag and then you don't even have to deal with a plugin, which could be open to vulnerabilities and you name it. So. Uh, I guess I don't have a particular plugin that I recommend for this. If anything, I'd recommend the header tag route if you were going to go that way, um, but you've gotta have Google Analytics set up on your website. Okay, plugin number 10, last but not least, is called Updraft Backup. It's this guy right here. Um, 
I really like this plugin. It's really great. Um, there's a ton of installations, great reviews. The reason I love this is because it's automated. It's, uh, it's just easy and I don't have to think about it. Not to mention, you can back up to multiple different um, sources. So you can back up to like an Amazon S3 bucket. You can back up to a Google Drive. You can back up to an FTP or an SFTP web or site. Like you can just, you can customize it to your heart's content. You can do daily backups, weekly backups, monthly backups. Um, if you use the managed WP that I mentioned earlier, they do backups, but they only do it on a monthly basis. It's free, which is great, but they only do it once per month. Whereas this, you can configure, you know, to do it as frequently as you need. Sometimes I've got clients one month just isn't frequent enough. Their website changes enough that it needs to be more frequent than that. Um, this is a great solution. The other thing though, is in my web hosting course, I do have a custom built scripts that I use. And I, I actually default to that more uh, reason being is that it updates more than, or excuse me, backups more than just WordPress. It does um, the entire home directory. It does DNS entries, emails, things like that. I like that because if I accidentally delete something other than the WordPress website itself, then uh, I, I get all of those things saved in my backup automatically. So I really like that, but this is a really, really good solution. So that's it. Those are my top 10 WordPress plugins. Hopefully you found some of these useful. Maybe, probably you're already using a lot of these. And if you're not using some of these, hopefully you found some new ones that you find valuable. I do wanna mention, um, you, you'll notice that I'm not using any caching plugins. I hate total cache. I hate W3 cache. If anything, I would just use a CDN, but I think it, it's kind of a way to put a band-aid on a bloated website. I'm not a big fan of caching plugins. I think you should optimize your images. I think you should remove the bloat rather than trying to compress the bloat. So that's just my personal opinion. That's how I build websites. I think that's a better route, but to each their own. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.